What's up everyone, welcome to Akuma Studies, and today we'll be taking a look at the history of LCD wristwatches. Excuse me, we're not actually looking at LCD wristwatches, we're looking at LED wristwatches, and that's actually an important distinction. LED wristwatches came before LCD wristwatches, so LCD watches are, think about, um, think the KCOs, or pretty much every single watch you see today. LCD wristwatches, I'll put some photos up, are basically the ones that you have to touch them to turn on because they take up, a, they use up a lot of energy um, displaying the time. And have you ever, you know, when a wristwatch kind of has that kind of like a Casio World Time or something, they have that kind of soft hue about them? Those are LCD wristwatches, okay? But if they're bright, they're LED. So just keep that in mind. And LED stands for light emitting diode. So what that means is that. Um, you pass the light emitting diode was created by passing electrical currents through gallium um, fused materials and gallium is a, basically a, a metallic element and uh, you can combine it with different types of uh, chemicals to make different colors so you can maybe combine it with nitrate nitrite nitrate nitrite to make it into green or uh, some other um, colors and gallium is, is primarily used in things like uh, microwaves or wristwatches or small electronics because of its uh, chemical properties. And to really understand the history of LCD wristwatches, we have to take a look at the history of Hamilton. Hamilton uh, was an American company, uh, was, emphasis on the was an American company, established in 1892 and they had a really, really good focus on rail, railroad uh, pocket watches. And ro railroads back then were obviously very important for transporting people, for goods. A, rail a railman's pocket watch had to be uh, regulated, um, <laughs> government-wise and wristwatch-wise. If a watch was off, things could be less safe, timing could be off, there could be late, you could be late, you could be early, and there could be accidents, and there has definitely been a lot of accidents. So after they specialized in railroad pocket watches, they grew to be a, uh, a big dog and worked on the world, on the world watch stage. Um, Hamilton, like I said, just keeps growing and growing and growing. And then in the 18, no, sorry, 1971, uh, they get bought up by a Swiss corporation. I don't know which one off the top of my head, but they've got a 51% stake in, in Hamilton. It was like, I think what happened was, uh, I think they bought a 25% stake, put an option on that 25% stake or something like that, and then doubled it to like 51. So, um, unfortunate that uh, most, I mean, I don't think there's any American watch brands left that uh, are actually American. I think uh, Ball Watches is still American. Um, I, can't th I can't think of any others off the top of my head. But this is the, Hamilton creates the very first LCD wristwatch, and it's the Pulsar. In 1968, um, Stanley Kerbick, I don't know who that is, but I guess he's a famous uh, filmmaker, asked Hamilton to create a clock for the movie Space Odyssey. And this clock looks pretty sick, especially for the time. Um, it basically looks like a like a Star Trek like orb, I guess is how I would say. Um, I really like it. I think it's super duper cool looking. But from that technology. They, come, they uh, partnered up with a different country called a company called Electrodata, and them and Electrodata made the Pulsar. And when pe when you say LCD wristwatch, it's almost synonymous with the Pulsar. The Pulsar, when it came, first came out, retailed for like two thousand one hundred dollars in nineteen seventies money. Keep that in mind. And it was kind of part of the wave that brought about the end of wristwatches. Um, the Pulsar. Uh, has a lot of different variants, and it's one of those watches that has a really, really strong cult following. Um, I've never seen one, I've never had one, I've never even heard anybody talk about them, but when I was doing the research, I found sites dedicated to them, there's a huge aftermarket for batteries and stuff, so I hope to find something very similar to that when I'm looking for my Accutron movement. But I, I mean, the Accutron versus the Pulsar, I mean the Accutron, way more popular than the Pulsar. Um, and uh, I remember how I remember I told you guys the watch was a Texas Instruments watch. I don't think it is anymore, um, just because it doesn't look anywhere the same, and I couldn't find any variant to look like that. And besides, it says Lithronics on it. Um, but Texas Instruments came in 
uh, in the 80s, I believe, and came out with a $20 uh, LCD wristwatch, and then later halved it to $10. So that pretty much put the Pulsar out of business, and uh, eventually Pulsar was sold to Seiko. LCD wristwatches uh, died out and were replaced by LED wristwatches. Um, so I just think it's fun, it's interesting to see like the trend. It's that kind of transitionary period from where we went from mechanical to you know quartz and it, it, the pulsar and LCD wristwatches. The technology itself is is in that in between. It's that gap between the two. Uh, and the whole story is is a classic example of the whole entire watch industry as a whole. A mechanical watch company established in the 1800s. Um, trying to, not even trying, staying in the watch game by developing new technologies, but eventually um, those technologies take over the, destroy the company in the long run. Uh, I hope you guys liked watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I would really like to know what you guys think. Um, and if you own any Pulsar watches, or any LCD wristwatches, or any vintage uh, quartz wristwatches that display the time in, in a, um, what's it called? Yeah, in, in, a not, in, a, in a digital format, let me know. Thank you very, very much for watching. Akuma out.